Florida State has a new quarterback in Brock Glenn, but there's still quite a few things the Knowles have to work on. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. Please hit that like button, that subscribe, and share this podcast. Truly appreciate you stopping in to talk some Noles football with me. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. Brock Glenn had his first start of 2024. I didn't have the highest of expectations, and I imagine that most of you did neither. He performed pretty well. Here are a few of the things that I like about him. And then after that, we'll get into what the Knowles certainly still need to work on. First, he's got grit. If you're going to play quarterback, you're going to take some shots. You're going to be a guy that's maligned by the media, by the fans, by the pundits in the broadcast booth across the board. And then you probably got to deal with your coaches too. I think that Brock did a pretty good job considering the circumstances. Again, I will get into the deterrence, if you will, the drops, the penalties, poor field position, and quite frankly, just not having enough time. Like Andre Otto has no business starting yet. Florida State's in a bad spot at O-line for all reasons, 100% on the Florida State coaching staff. That Again, that's going to be discussed. And by the way, Tuesday night is going to be the sound off on that. Uh, having a live show at 6 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, fans can voice their opinions about the coaching staff, and I will as well among other things. But again, Brock did well considering. Here are his statistics for what they are worth. And keep in mind, when I bring these up, these are the numbers that go into the books. They do not account drops. They do not account like the bomb that he threw to Malik. Great pass, great catch. Take him back. He would have thrown for 300 plus yards against a pretty good defense. If it wasn't for the simple fact Florida State just shot itself in the foot up front with penalties or they had drops. I mean, they, 75 to 100 yards more is pretty conservative answer. So here are the numbers for Glenn. 23 completions, 41 attempts. That is a 56% mark. Had 228 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. The sad thing is because of the drops and the, the penalties, his average was under six per attempt, which is quite honestly pretty low. But at the same time, if you give him like the throw to Benson, and one or two others that were either penalties or drops, he's averaging like eight or nine yards per attempt. That's what most major college quarterbacks do. This is why coaches in general, and I'm not just saying Florida State here, talk about following through on the play from getting to end. Ball hits you in the hands in the end zone. Ball hits you in the hands on a basic crosser, or you just get terrible technique up front as an offensive lineman and you grab a guy when Brock's throwing it so he doesn't get hit, I get it. They're going to penalize you on that, and obviously drops are their own kind of penalty. Florida State is still a team that shoots itself in the foot, so Brock's stats are a little iffy, and that's why I at least want to bring up this. I think the number is higher, but pro football focus has him with four drops that he was, shall we say, also attributed with. And with that, <laughs> this is so sad, um, the passes that were remaining beyond the completions – that's 14.8% of the passes that weren't already completed. That's ridiculous. That's one in seven passes that weren't completed were a drop. Uh, he had a couple of batted balls. That's unfortunate. One was going to be a deep shot. He had a couple of big time throws, including the one to Benson that takes, again, that's taken back. He did have the pick, but that's a miscommunication. You can tell he thought the ball was going to go inside because the route, it was uh, a throw to Hakeem Williams. That was going to be a throw on a post. He went outside, the DB went inside, and DB got a Terrell got the easiest pick of his college football career. It is what it is. But by and large, despite all the pressure, the sacks and the fumble, or not the fumble, but the interception and everything, he really didn't seem to get too de deterred. And I was shocked by that. Redshirt freshman, whether they played a bunch or not, when you go up against a defense like that, you're down 17 to nothing, just like boom. Generally, it's Katie bar the door. Let's give Brock some credit. That is very unusual, and it shows his ability to solve problems in real time 
it also gives you a perspective of this is not just a guy that's out there to play. He's thinking in the moment, and he prepared. Again, Clemson's defense deserves credit by, by all accounts. But he's a pretty good guy to have in the lineup if you need somebody that's mobile. He's got enough ability, and he's got the arm strength. There's just so many pieces to work with. To that point, on, on the Saturday Night Live show, I mentioned this. When I saw Brock a couple of years ago in L.A. at the Elite 11 Finals, I thought he was pretty good, but I didn't think he had a great arm or anything. I just knew he had upside. Well, the interesting part about it is now his arm is definitively stronger than when I saw him two years ago. Not like a little bit. It's definitive. He can just play in his back foot and launch it. That's a that's a good sign. I mean, he's still going to get a little bit stronger, but he's about to the point where he's going to be as an adult. Florida State needs that because, and I'm glad the coaches noticed this, they're not going to sustain drives with this offensive line. That's obvious. At least you're taking shots down the field. At least you're attempting to throw the football down there to get a big play because you're not going 14 play drives on a consistent basis. I mean, you can't every now and then on a consistent basis to make it happen. So it's, it's pretty incredible right now. Looking at his passing depth, this means passes 20 or more yards from the line of scrimmage, 15.6. That's almost one in six passes. He's chucking it down the field. So, I mean, it, it's a problem because, you know, the incompletions and whatnot, but he's at least trying where I found it to be interesting. He was better in the middle of the field. This is the air DJ is really bad in the intermediate 10 to 19 yards. You got to go over the linebackers in front of the safeties quite often. And there's at least one or the other almost on every play, unless it's a complete bust. He's five out of seven so far this year, 71.4%, 76 yards, 10.9 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, no picks. That is a wonderful, wonderful, statistic like that stat line is what you're looking for and quite frankly it's going to give him a chance to be a successful quarterback long term his passing grades deep are 75 percent point 75.3 mediums 83 percent and his short is 78.3 the interesting thing about this he doesn't have any experience with it this season in real meaningful minutes then he does it against Clemson if that doesn't give you hope I'm not really sure what would because it's not easy to find a quarterback in the middle of a season. It's usually pretty hard. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the passing games, some of the things that I think they can improve on. Then we'll get into some of the errors as well. That is next here on Locked on Seminoles. When you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the right, right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job might be open to the perfect role in a given month. 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're not looking in the right place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. What can Florida State do to improve the passing game? And I know the first answer is going to be from right. Well, the O-line's got to block better. I'm going to get to that in its own entity in about five to ten minutes. Number one, there's just got to be more reps. Now that he's the starter and they have something to go with, it's just volume. This is the unfortunate part of football. But the guys that have the best chemistry with players, shocker, they have the most time with them. Brock is now getting the first team reps. It's something I've talked about for weeks, and many of you as, have as well. There is no substitute for it. You need thousands of them, literally. That means spring, summer, fall camp, weeks of practice during the middle of the week, and then obviously games. Well, he's obviously behind the eight ball, but it's going to get better. I mean, it can't get worse. So that play to Hakeem, they'll figure that out, who, what, when, where, why, and how. It ended up being a pick. If the ball's thrown outside, because Hakeem thought it was going there, Terrell honestly didn't think the ball was going outside. He completely hedged his bets inside 
if Brock still threw it there. So there's something between the ears of those two they got to figure out. Can't have easy turnovers. I don't know who's to blame, and that's not going to be information we ever completely get, but they got to figure it out so it doesn't happen again. Two, this is an offense that's unbelievably predictable, except for the bombs, which they threw quite a few of and I thought was great. The screen game is easy right now for Florida State. The receivers stink at blocking. They're awful. They are bad, and everybody knows it's coming. I had people on the live chat from Saturday night, which, by the way, I've downloaded. You can watch it on any of the major platforms or listen to it, Odyssey and Spotify, Apple, whatever it is you use, CastBox, Amazon, you can go out and check them out. Look, this is a very simple situation. They've got to get away from the screens. And again, it's timing and rhythm. I know there's more risk involved, but with Florida State's O-line and their bad run blocking, it's really what it is. Receivers on screens blocking for others. It's like a running play. They're terrible at it right now. There's too many whiffs and too many guys, even though they're putting in every, it's not getting done. I don't know how it's not working, but it's not. There are a few that worked out. Okay. The, there was a screen pretty early in the game to Hakeem that got like eight yards. You'll take that every time. Give me second and two, third and two all day, but that's not the norm. Um, in conjunction with that, They've got to hit some double moves where the guy comes out, acts like he's going to block. That's about all they're doing anyway, and then takes off. You see it every week in college football. If you're going to hit big plays in the passing game with go routes, that's fine. But another way to do it is to fake you're going to block and take off. Everybody does it. Florida State needs to hit a few of these kind of plays and show them because the corners and safeties for these teams are just crashing. They have zero respect for what Florida State does in the screen because they're so bad at it. At least the throwing the ball down the field tried to help a little bit. It, it did some, but Clemson, they, they're well coached, and they did a pretty good job of eating it up. But Florida State's got to block better. That's just technique stuff. That's got to happen. Three, when they do throw and they threw some stuff to the perimeter a little bit, I don't think they have a ton of confidence in the bootleg waggle game because Kyle Morlock has been really bad. He played some last night, but Landon started, and he should have. He's their best offensive weapon right now. He had seven catches for 80 yards. They finally started throwing the ball in the middle of the field, the way routes, doing things like that's great. But they've got to give Brock easy access throws with these tight ends. There's a lot of work that goes into it. These are not quickly learned plays because it is precise timing, but it will really help Florida State because I know this people don't like this term, but it's like an extension of the running game. You block for one or two seconds, then you just go out in the flat. Play action, roll that way, throw it to the tight end. Every team in the world runs it. Florida State needs more of that. Because like Landon Thomas and Amari Williams, those are athletes. You could do it with a running back, a fullback, an H-back, tight end. I do not care. If you've got nothing in front of you but grass, you should get yardage. I want to see that added into the offense a little more. I know it takes time. They just got to get there. Finally, on the quarterback situation, before I go into some of the unfortunate situations uh, up front, Florida State, just can't have these drops. I'm just stating it for the record. I'm not going to go into it. You just can't have them. They suck the life out of your offense. They do. And there was a Amari drop one, if I remember. You got a receiver. There's a running back. I mean, Jakai had one. They were backed up early in the game on a slant. It was kind of low, but it had to be thrown there. It was between two guys. If you want to improve as an offense, you got to make plays that are not the norm. Jakai is their best overall offensive player, in my opinion, through the first six games. But he didn't play his best game last night. It is what it is. Again, part of that's timing, part of that's rhythm. First play of the game, Jakai didn't think the ball was going to have that much smoke on. I mean, Brock can, he can throw a ball now. He, he can zing it. I don't think he's got the arm DJ does. Don't get me wrong, but it's still pretty strong. Jakai doesn't have the biggest window to throw to. That's also important to note, but he's got to catch that kind of pass. Florida State has too little room for error. If it's close, it's got to be a catch. End of story. Now, let's talk about the offensive line. Oh, boy. Andre Ott was in the game, and he was playing guard. He's not ready. Is that Andre's fault? Not really. He's a redshirt freshman. Generically speaking, at minimum, you want offensive linemen to be in their third year before they play. I don't think he's that guy yet. Uh, there are exceptions. I mean, there are guys that have started 
at Florida State, his freshman and, and redshirt freshman form have been really good. But like, or Andre Otto, I'm sorry, not Otto. He's just not quite there yet. Big dude. Uh, he's got the size, but he's inconsistent with his technique. And despite being massive, like most college offensive linemen, he's 320 pounds. I just don't think he's ready for the live reps. There was the play, I forget who Brock threw it to, but he literally just got collapsed, like head on, got hit and just fell down and grabbed the guy. It was TJ Parker on a stunt and was just mauled. He's not ready. This is a problem because they got injuries. I just want to get that out of the way, but the injuries up front on the O-line um, are causing issues. There's not as much comfort, but Darius, he's okay at left tackle. Uh, he'd been hurt earlier this year, but he's getting back into shape. That's not a major issue. The one that I want to bring up that I think he's hurt, and if he's not, there's something really, really, really wrong, is Mo. He was awful last night. That might have been the worst I've ever seen Mo play. He's your starting center. He's a sixth-year senior. He couldn't snap the football. The ball was everywhere. That's unexplainable, uh, unexplainable to me unless he's injured. And as I always say, you're not going to get a full story from a coach on an injury situation to one of your starters, especially with the center, because teams know that they're going to start putting two guys over and try to mess with his head. And all. Zero chance Norvell is going to talk about that. But if that doesn't get fixed, that'll cost Florida State a game somewhere down the stretch. They don't need any more deterrence, obviously. Um, finally, th their run game chemistry is negative five million. I feel sorry for Cam and Lawrence. I mean, there's no way. They're getting the ball. There was a, a toss right to Cam. At the point of attack, the number one guy you got to block is the edge. He comes off un untouched. Zero chemistry. They don't know who they're blocking. They have no idea. Now, again, I'm going to get into the sound off. It's going to be Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Live show, Locked on Seminoles. No holds bar. I do not care anymore. Several coaches, I'm just going to call out, throw them under the bus and put it in reverse and go boom, boom, again. That being stated, the O-line is a travesty. You have one of the most experienced offensive lines, and I know they're banged up, but you still have one of the most experienced offensive lines in college football. Even if they're banged up, they can help each other in practice, and they're regressing. That's a product of coaching in addition to the play. Players deserve a lot of blame here. Let's not kid ourselves. But this is a major coaching problem. It's a fireable offense, straight up. There's a little prelude to Tuesday night. But here, let me go through the statistics just to put it into perspective. Here's the overall rushing stats for the Knolls. 23 carries, 22 yards. What? Uh, team, they had a minus 17. Uh, so that's part of it. So you, you can go 22 carries, 39. You're still not averaging two yards per carry. That's a joke. Uh, Lawrence Tofili led him in rushing 10 carries for 16 yards. He's going to end up at NFL draft camp, and he didn't have 20 yards rushing. Come on. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Now, when you get into the specifics of it, and you start looking at like quarter by quarter and all that kind of stuff, here are the numbers by quarter for rushing yards. Florida State in the first quarter, minus two. Second quarter, nine. Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, for the half, obviously, that means seven. Third quarter only. This is one of the worst stats in Florida State football history. Minus seven. Rushing yards in the fourth quarter, they had 22. Look out. So for the game, you know, they they end up at, at 22 yards. There's minus 17. They only had one turnover, but they, they couldn't get it done and any kind of short yardage. They didn't want to run it. They still wanted to throw it. That kind of tells you where the coaches were. They were throwing it on first downs early in the game. Zero faith in the O-line, and they quite honestly shouldn't have. Uh, here is the one glorious stat, which is shocking to me for Florida State. How this happened with this O-line makes no sense. Would you believe that Florida State was four for four on fourth downs? I would have given that about a 1% chance at best. Four for four. That's pretty wild. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about Florida State, some of their troubles. It's not as bad as the line, though. 
And we're going to talk a little bit about what they can do next to kind of get it going, because quite honestly, they still need some things to go right, because right now it is it is definitely not headed in the right direction. That is next at Locked On Simples. Have you downloaded the Game Time app yet? If you want concert tickets, you want to go see Metallica, if you want to go see your favorite band from the 1990s, whatever it is, you want to go see the most recent band, Game Time is a place you can do it. If you want to go see an MLB post game, that's something I've always wanted to do. That's a major bucket list thing for me. Yankees, Dodgers, Braves, whoever it is, Game Time is a place for you. And here's a cool feature about the app after you download it on your phone. Point blank, I'm not the most patient guy. I want to see where my seat is. You click on the ticket, it'll give you a view right on your phone so you know like where you're at to the pitcher's mound, to the midcourt on a basketball court, to where you're at in a movie theater, whatever it is, you can have that right in front of you. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. What are the things does Florida State need to work on? I have a list. And these are just some of the things in general. I want to summarize O-line here. Obviously, th this is a problem. I'm, again, going to go in depth on the live show on Tuesday night. But O-line recruiting in the 2021 classes was a disaster, and you're paying for it now. Those are fourth and fifth year players. The sixth year guys are your left tackle and center. But where are the other guys? They missed. They had an atrocious two-year run. That can never happen at any major program, let alone Florida State. Come on, man. It's Florida State. Also, development. They've gotten worse this year. That's coaching. Three, you went to the portal, you invested in the portal, and now the portal is not giving dividends. That's a coaching problem. Finally, the injuries, that they are what they are. When you miss, injuries maximize how bad it is for your program. Here we are. Florida State better figure it out. They better figure it out. All right, let's go to the receivers next. Um, I'm tired of talking about O-line. It's it's so bad. It's it's kind of hard to really understand. It's two parts with the receiving group right now. You had that catch again, that that grab early in the game by Malik. The catch and get barely get I mean, that's NFL stuff. It sucks that it, there's a penalty on it, doesn't get it, but It'll give you confidence if you're Brock. You know, Brock Glenn throws the ball. He sees the guy catch it. That's going to give him confidence regardless if the play stands or not. It should give Malik some confidence. He had some nice catches. He had some decent plays. Matter of fact, let's, let's just jump into the stats here real quick for the Florida State Seminoles at the wide receiver, running back, and tight end positions, catching the football. Uh, Landon Thomas, the freshman, he started 7 for 80. He had 11.4-yard uh, average. Here's the best part with him. He had eight targets. He caught seven balls. That's fantastic. Hakeem Williams, four catches, 53 yards. He was he caught every one he was targeted. Malik Benson, three for 39. He was targeted six times. Had a little more problem getting in the ball. Ja'Kai Douglas, three catches, 21 yards. Uh, Kentron, two for 16. Tofili, two for three. One for 13 for Amari. That was that great touchdown on the post route. And then Brian Courtney had a three-yard catch. All right. They've spread it around. That's another good sign for Brock. I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the show. Good news. Bad news. They still drop too many, and there's just not enough chemistry yet. You'll get there. The other things that I think about the route running, they're not getting enough separation weight, like the play. Kentron, I don't know what he was doing, and they talked about it on the broadcast where he faded too early. He's a fifth-year senior. He's not going to get it if he's not doing it now. I don't understand that. That's That's really weird. And then the communication, they'll work out with Brock. It is what it is. There's only one thing I really want to say about the running backs because I can't really grade them. I think they're running a little more tentative because they're afraid of getting blasted. Does anybody blame whether it's Cam Davis, whether it's Warren Stofili, or anybody else that comes into the backfield? Danzy's playing a little bit now. Do you think they should be held accountable for that? I mean, like that play where they threw the toss to Cam Davis and he got blasted by the guy that was the point of attack and they didn't touch him. You're going to see mediocre running back play when guys are just getting smoked. They're human. Uh, I'm not going to throw them under the bus. 
Defensive side of the ball, I'll get to in a second, but I just want to quickly address the tight ends. I'm excited about the two freshmen. I am. But they don't block that well. That's part of going through the strength and conditioning program for at least two years in the offseason. They're obviously not at that point yet. And it's also a scenario they're going to have to get a little more chemistry. Okay. Done with the offense. Now let's talk about the two areas on defense. There's just two things, one at each level. The D-line and linebackers as a run unit have to have what they call run gap fits. I talk about it all the time. So to analysts, coaches, et cetera, a hat on a hat. Well, you also got to have a hat and a gap. There was a play where ESPN did a tremendous job. They had a back view. For whatever reason, I'm not going to get into names and all of it, but this happened multiple times. This is just one of them I saw. Defensive lineman takes a gap, starts to penetrate. He's getting slowed down some. The linebacker falls right behind him. The running back, one of the best running backs in the country, um, Phil Moffa, the gap that the linebacker should have went into, he just runs through unscathed, and Phil runs for 59 yards. That is 100% a play that should have went for about two yards and went for 59. These are the ki kinds of mental errors that you can never have. They have them constantly. Every game there's a play or two like this, that's really magnified, but there's a lot of little ones where if they do get to the fit, it's a step late or the technique's bad or they don't break down to tackle. And like there was a play Moffa ran over a DB. He didn't break down to tackle. He's a 235 pound man. He's going to hit you hard. Lack of technique when Florida State's front seven and even the DBs and tackling is atrocious far too often. Every now and then they make a great play. And you're like, oh, okay, maybe they're stepping forward. And then they just, it's just up and down. I don't understand the lack of tackling, but that's something they got to fix in conjunction with the run gap fits because they uh, they don't work well for you. Finishing plays, uh, DBs, there were a couple of times they could have got picks. They didn't time their jump right or they like on the that touchdown on the bomb. I think it was Conrad Hussey, if I remember right. He just tries to shoulder the guy. He bounces off him and lands on his feet and just kind of jogs to the end zone. Wrap up. You got to finish the play. Again, it's a tackling thing, but that's mentality. If you drive a guy, like you hit him high and he's in the air, he's going to probably let go of football. It's just a natural. You're trying to protect yourself with your hands. If he doesn't, he's going to get clobbered. Got to do it. Got to do it. Florida State has had so many of these goofy plays like that this year. It just, like, you wonder when it's going to end. You can't give points away. And that was one of the key moments in the game. And Florida State allowed at two guys there. Neither one made a play on the ball. They didn't tackle well, and the guy scores. Can't happen. So with that, thank you once again for making Locked On Seminoles your first listen each and every day. I truly appreciate you stopping in and talk some Noles football with me. It's a lot of fun. And finally, we have a quarterback to talk about. That's exciting. Next, to get a breakdown of everything that's going on in college football, you can check out Locked On College Football with my guy Spencer McLaughlin and also Locked On ACC. This is a weird year in the ACC. Uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, Louisville got upset. Miami should have lost the cow. This week is bizarre. So hope everybody had a good time. I will see you again on Monday. Take care.